Snow in Toronto is always a real roller coaster ride. You never know if it's gonna stick around, like it'll come and go five to ten times, and then uh, finally, one time, it'll be here forever and we hate it. I was thinking today we could go back to a warmer time and start a beat using some samples that I collected this past summer, one week when my wife and I rented a cottage, so just collecting some random sounds from nature, we'll see what we can turn them into, and um, yeah, high five for warmth. Cool bird call. Oops. All right, so I've got my sounds loaded into Flip. Uh, obviously, you know, wanna use my own app that came out earlier this month. I was thinking I would start with this sound, which I actually got by accident. Oops. You can hear me saying oops there. Uh, this is when I dropped my phone, and I'm pretty sure there's a good kick drum in here. Yeah, that spot. Bring out some of the low end there. I mean, that's a pretty good kick drum, we'll go with that. And so this sound would, that's what I was actually trying to get when I dropped my phone. I'm sure we can make this into a good snare. Maybe we can pitch it around a bit. EQ to bring out some of that resonance. And also let's just boost the highs. Cool, and then we've got this leaves sample. Let's just envelope that right down. Oh, we should definitely EQ it. Tiniest bit of bit reduction. And make it even shorter. Sweet, let's put a beat down with these three elements. I'm gonna tap tempo. 80.8, how perfect, 808. I wanna record without quantization. Let's go for it. Just gonna make a little edit to the kick drum. That one's coming in a little earlier than I would want it, and I also want to adjust the velocity. Okay, cool, let's look at our other sounds. Oh yeah, I had this crackle. I was thinking I would use that as like a fake vinyl crackle, so let's just uh, EQ out all the lows. Maybe pitch it down a bit. I think that's pretty good. Let's just make it one long note. Oops, I want to uh, have this quantized. Just zoom out so my resolution is bigger. There, one bar of crackle. Okay, now I've also got this bird sample, which has a lot of low end in it. I don't know if there was like a vehicle going around at the time or maybe that's just the wind. I'm going to severely EQ that. Oh, we could reverse it. Yeah. Ah. I'm gonna use this as a little effect stab thing. So let's put some uh, chorus on it maybe. Get some stereo goodness going, as well as a delay. Yeah, I'll just drop that in every now and then at the start of the loop. Okay, now we've got this water sound. Sounds really nice, actually. And by the way, these are all just recorded with my phone. So this is the uh, iPhone XR mic. Kind of like that drop. Actually, that one too. You know what, I'm gonna use them both. So I'm gonna bring the water sample onto a second pad, replacing one of these other random samples that wasn't from the cottage. Man, water droplets used to be so cool for like two years in songs. I feel like I haven't heard that in a while, but uh, we're just gonna go with it. I feel like these could be cool little snare toppers. <laughs> Oh, that's actually kind of a nice rhythm at the end. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm gonna alternate between these two water droplets as snare toppers, and then uh, the second one I'm gonna hold on to so we have that kind of rhythmic fill from the water. They're kind of loud though. Ooh. Maybe that one can have a volume swell at the end as a nice little, uh, I don't know, lead into the next bar. Let's go back to that page, automate. Volume is the default selection. So we want it to kind of rise up from the fourth beat on. I like that. I feel like I want the hi-hat to be even shorter. Oh, or we could automate the decay time so that each hi-hat is a little bit different. Automate, envelope, 
decay. So that's around where it is. I'll just kind of like squiggle it a little bit randomly and then shorten the loop to be here. That's kind of neat to humanize it, although I think it should be looping in kind of a more predictable way. I had it at like three eighth notes there or something like that. Let's try and alternate between a short decay and a long decay like that. Maybe too much, I gotta be subtler with these. Yeah, that's tighter, sweet. So we've incorporated all the cottage sounds. Now I wanna put down some instruments. And I'm gonna do that with the help of this little friend here. This is the iRig Pro Duo IO. It's an audio interface for iOS. It's actually what I've been monitoring through this whole time so that I have low latency, but it also lets you plug in uh, instrument, mic, or line level. Plus it can provide fandom power to a mic. So it's really handy for iOS music making. And actually this brings up a whole lot of things that I need to talk about. So first of all, I'm doing a contest right now with Flip and uh, with iRig. We're gonna give three of these Pro Duo IOs away. And there are a lot more prizes too, so there are actually three prize bundles and each one's worth over a thousand dollars. To enter, just share a screen recording of any music you've made with Flip and tag Flip Sampler and uh, use the hashtag Flip Contest on Instagram or Twitter. By the end of December, I'm gonna listen to all of them and then pick a winner in the first week of January. Pick three winners in the first week of January. Okay, and the second thing I wanna say is we are testing Android right now. We're gonna see if we can bring Flip to Android. It's something I wanted to do from the beginning, but uh, when you're trying to develop for iOS and Android at the same time, it's almost like developing two different apps. You know, it takes that much more time, energy, resources to make it happen. And unfortunately, there are a lot more challenges with developing for Android than iOS. I'll get more into that in a future video. I just wanted to let you know that we are gonna do everything we can to bring this to Android as well. And then thing number three is uh, regarding Bluetooth audio. So since putting Flip out, I've realized that there's something that a lot of people don't necessarily know about Bluetooth audio, which is that there is a built-in delay with it. It doesn't always seem this way, like let's say you're watching a YouTube video and it feels like it's in perfect sync, and that's because your devices are smart enough to delay the videos by the same amount that your Bluetooth audio is being delayed so that everything does play back in sync. But unfortunately, a little bit of latency is introduced anytime you're using Bluetooth audio, and that's why it doesn't really get used in music production context. So I would recommend you use the little lightning cable adapter thing for uh, corded headphones, or something like the iRig Pro Duo IO, which gives you a separate headphone and monitor outputs, as well as, of course, the input options, which we are going to use now, finally, and play some bass. Let's also get something going through a mic. Look how beautiful that is. This is the Soyuz Bomblet. Soyuz sent me a few mics to check out recently, so I'm very excited about them. Hi! Well, let's, let's record this filter automation. Also gonna do a fake side chain thing. So uh, we'll go to the volume and I'm just gonna set the length of this automation to be one beat long. <laughs> So that's a pretty good start for like 20 minutes of messing around. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of my own voice. I'd probably prefer to use another sample, but I just wanted to show how you can use a mic with Flip. Details for that contest are linked in the description. And I also wanted to let you know that my online music production class is running again. So if you're interested to learn everything about how I make music, uh, my techniques, the way that I think about creative decisions and how I come up with ideas, mixing and mastering, uh, it's all covered in my online music production course monthly.com slash Andrew if you're interested in learning more about that. I hope you're doing well during this holiday time of year and I'll see you in the next video.